What's going on guys? It's Commander Restless Corpse here, and we are back with Elite Dangerous. And uh We're just we're gonna do some exploring today. Because I don't have anything anywhere near me really you know, there were no like big stars or anything. I just have a uh two hundred or so light year course plotted. We're already halfway through it. And when we get there, clearly we'll just start another course. But I'm just kind of flying aimlessly now towards the core with nothing to actually shoot for. So I'm hoping that we're going to find something. Uh, well, all right, then. Maybe we've already found something awesome. No, those look like metal. Well, this is a, that's a water world. That's metal. That's metal. You can tell just by looking at it. It looks like a solid uh, like rock underneath. This one is metal. This looks like an ammonia world. So we'll be checking that out. So we're going to check this one and the other one out. Oh, sorry. Uh, but sometimes I hit escape to get out of that instead of M again or click exit. But we're just, uh, we're just going to do some straight up exploring today. And hopefully like, uh, my, my voice feels fine today. My, my throat feels fine today. Uh, but who knows when we get to start talking. So if we go back to the way we used to do the exploring videos where I only show you the cool stuff and I cut out all the other stuff, it should give my throat a little bit to heal in between each part. So hopefully we'll get a decent, uh, like a decently length video today. In any case, I think it's really cool that I'm about to hit like uh, a water world and ammonia world. At least I think that second one was an ammonia world. It could be a water world too, but just the way it looked on the map. Um, I did scour Reddit today and there really isn't anything crazy going on. I think that everybody has essentially calmed down. Um, I did see a post where somebody was talking about how dead the game felt and it was titled like, is Elite Dangerous Dying or something like that. And I, I mean, I don't really have an opinion on that because I've been out here exploring so I haven't seen any kind of player interaction at all the the entire time I've been out here so I can't really comment on that but one of the people did mention something uh, one of the comments was that when people heard that the update was being pushed back to June a lot of people were like okay well I'm gonna take a break then and I'm gonna step out and play some other games uh, the division seems to be one of them I am uh, I guess, fortunately for me, anyway, I, I'm juggling the two. So it's not like, you know, I heard about the update and decided that I was just going to go play The Division. I'm juggling the two because I, I've got, you know, this series going and I'm getting a lot of support for the series. So obviously I would not throw this to the side until June. Because first of all, I'm, I'm still having fun. Like, I was just talking to uh, one of my new friends. We'll see up here. Jimmy Jordan 91 we were just talking about how cool it is he said that I inspired him to buy himself an exploration vehicle and get out here and explore and we were talking about like the stars that we like and we we're both in agreement that O types are really cool and Herbigs are really cool uh, so I mean I'm still having fun and I'm sure that a lot of people are still having fun with the game there are still PvP videos on reddit all the time uh, I watched some of them. I watched the uh, the one that said, like, don't drink and interdict. That was pretty funny. A guy took on a python in an eagle. And although he didn't get his shields, he didn't even get the python's shields all the way down. He got them close before he had to try and bug out. But he didn't make it, and he was blown up. But it's fun to watch those kinds of videos where, like, there was no malice, no ill intent. He just wanted to see if he can do it, and he couldn't. But he uh, he led that, that python on a battle for like seven minutes. It was pretty crazy. And that gives me a little bit of hope for the eagle. Because remember, that's one of the things that I want to do when I get back to the bubble. Is jump in an eagle and fly it around and try things like combat in the reses and stuff like that. Maybe I'll, I'll get into some crazy PvP. There, see, that was an ammonia world. Uh, maybe I'll just jump into some like no strings no m bad intent pvp you know see if i can take things down with an eagle i mean it's the best way to you know it, it's the best way to Friendship practice i guess talking. in any case 
Uh, I'm going to get to this next system. We have six jumps to go. I'll let you guys know if I find anything awesome. All right, so I've plotted, of course, to what looks like a small line of neutron stars. I also kind of looked around the galaxy map for a little bit, and about 1,300 light years away, out of the way, there seems to be uh, a small line of, like, big stars, and I guess it, maybe it's a constellation or something, but they're all black holes. And I was kind of thinking about going out there, but it's just too far out of the way. Uh, and being that they're big stars, I'm pretty sure that they were destinations for some people so it might I mean if it wasn't so far away I would swing over there to it but we're trucking along and remember uh, I am gonna get out here again after the engineers drops so it's not like you know I'm skipping things and I'm never coming back out so uh, we're just gonna stay the course for now and this looks like a bunch of useless crap. But these are close enough that I can probably scan them from where I am. So let's hit these guys. But I was uh, talking with Tommy Jordan, the commander Tommy Jordan 91. And uh, the first thing he said to me when I accepted his friend request and he sent me a message is that he, you know, he was watching the videos and he enjoys the videos. And I brought up something that just kind of out of the blue that I actually never really talked about. And that's when I started this series, I wasn't sure what the reception would be like. Like I, I didn't start the series thinking that I was going to blow up doing it and I was going to get, you know, a ridiculous amount of subs and views and stuff. Generally when I start a series, because I, I, this channel is so small, when I start a series, I pretty much expect it to not do that great. And that's kind of two reasons. First of all, like I said, it's a very small channel and I just kind of do this because I like doing it. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to get super famous or anything like that. I mean, uh, that'd be great. Sure. But that's not what I'm doing. But the, the main thing that I kind of thought about when I started this series was that the fan base for this game seems pretty like pretty loyal. Like, ra I hesitate to say rabid, but they're, you guys are pretty loyal to the game. And there are already, like, dedicated Elite Dangerous YouTubers, like Isanona and, and all them. And although Isanona, I, I believe, has, has stopped, um, I've, I've seen lots of names, like Isanona, uh, Chaos Wolf, um, you know, Commander Nutter, and... and people like that Cornel uh, Cornelius something who does a lot of uh, like guide videos and comparisons of the ships and stuff like that drive and to be honest I, f I, I was kind of worried that people would see a new YouTuber for this and be like oh whatever we've already got our established guys and this guy you know he's new he doesn't know anything about the game so why would we watch that so I'm, I'm actually really surprised that even though it hasn't like taken off and, and blown up and, and you know gotten a, a giant fan base, the you guys that watch the videos are are pretty loyal. I, I mean, I guess for lack of a better word, like I, I noticed that you know within a couple hours of each video, it generally has you know forty or fifty views, which is good for a channel of my size, and you guys are hitting that like button and you're commenting. And I think that's awesome because one of my favorite things to do is actually talk to you guys about the video. Now I know that yesterday's video got quite a few comments and I haven't had a chance to go through them and respond to them all. Uh but I'm gonna be doing that, don't worry. Like I usually do that shit from my phone and uh, today was really weird like yesterday I pretty much like slept all day like I don't understand why uh, and not like <laughs> not even in my bed like I just get passing out in my computer chair like I don't, I don't know that happens sometimes but it's because uh, I had four days off which happens sometimes it lines up that way where I just have four days off and uh, as some of you know I suffer pretty hardcore from insomnia so Sometimes I end up staying up so late that I decide, look, 
if I go to sleep now, I'm going to sleep the next day away. So I'm going to try and stay up. And then I, I, I stay up for a while and then I end up like being like, I can't do this. I'm going to go to sleep. And then I sleep the entire day away. So, um, so it kind of turned into that situation yesterday where, well, two days ago now for you guys. Yesterday where I just, it all caught up to me and I kept falling back to sleep. I didn't get anything done. Uh, it was a miracle that I even, as a matter of fact, I was going to skip yesterday's video. But at like six in the morning, I was like, no, I'm not going to skip the video. I'm going to jump on. I'm going to, I'm going to do a quick video. Uh, and I'm really glad that I did because I don't want to, well, what, what do we have here? It's a water world. Excellent. Uh, I don't want to skip videos just because, you know, I'm tired or something like that. Like, I'm, uh, it's totally my fault that I was that tired. I shouldn't have tried to stay up. Uh, what's funny is I have this set in stone time frame for when I'm going to upload, and it's always noon. Uh, but, and you would think that I could just get up early and do a video if I was too tired to do it the night before, but for some reason, I, I just sleep all the time. <laughs> I mean, okay, so that, that sounds pretty bad, but I don't necessarily sleep all the time, but it's really hard for me to get up early in the morning if I don't work. So uh, that's why I do most of my recording at night. I'm actually recording at the usual time tonight instead of super late, uh, the usual time being about you know, midnight, midnight 30, something like that. Right now it is one o'clock because I have been going for about half an hour, even though it, obviously the recording time or the video time doesn't reflect that, but I've gone, we're, we're looking at about 12 minutes. Um, but it's good that, that I cut when I did, honestly, because my throat was getting really bad. It's kind of, it's kind of getting right bad or really bad right now. I'm, I'm fighting back a cough. <coughs> Never mind, I lost that fight. But uh, I just wanted to point out, guys, that I, I really do appreciate that you guys took to me uh, into these videos and you didn't, like, push me out because I wasn't already in the the Elite Dangerous YouTube click or whatever. I, I, I'm not saying that there is one, but there could be. So thank you for that. And now before I get super mushy, we're going to continue on with... Uh, we're two jumps away from the first system in the line of neutron stars. I think there was like three or four just in kind of a line toward where we're going. So that's why I wanted to hit that. So I'm going to jump into those. I'll see you guys when I get there. All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. And as soon as I get this scanned up and check the system map, I will show you. Well, there's only one, so I'm not, I don't even need to look at the system map. Let's go look at the galaxy map. I'll show you. That it's kind of a line here. Yeah, and it just turned out to be the three. So it's this one, this one, and this one, and then we'll continue on. Uh, it doesn't look as well. There's another one here. And another one down here, but that's kind of out of the way. So, and, you know... Again, once again, guys, if I weren't making videos, if I wasn't making like a series, I probably should not be staring at the galaxy map uh, pointed at the neutron star because that has burned me before. Let's get away and talk about this. I, I do need to plot the next one. Uh, if I weren't, if I was just doing this for myself, uh, once again, and I've talked about this before, I would be hitting like all of this stuff because I would have the time. Uh, and I think that I might do, oh, it's only 4.4. I might do that at some point as well. Uh, maybe when I get back out here, I'll just come out here and just scan everything. But because I need to keep it going and because I do have, you know, a destination in mind, which is Sagittarius A, and because I'm getting kind of homesick for the bubble, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of doing an abridged version, I guess. Because we'll be back out here, guys. Don't worry. Especially after Engineers comes out. And I kind of wanted to talk about Engineers just a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the... Or maybe not necessarily talk about Engineers, but Space Legs in general. Like, I don't know if Engineers is when they're bringing the Space Legs out. I think that might be the next year. The next season, I guess. But I'm kind of worried. And the reason I'm worried is because it needs to be really well done. You know? Uh, there are... I don't want it to turn into like 
It's elite dangerous out here, but when you land on a planet, it turns into rust, where it's all, like, janky and buggy and stupid looking. And don't get me wrong, if you like rust, maybe it, maybe it's a cool game. I just don't like the way it looks. Uh, and all a, a, a lot of games like that, like even Ark. I, I love Ark, but it is not the best looking game at times. It's got, you know, a lot of unforgivable bugs, like graphically, I guess, that you just wouldn't expect from a game with Elite's, I guess, pedigree. Uh, I guess you can kind of call this an indie game, um, but I don't know if I would go that far. Maybe it is. Who knows? I mean, but my main concern is that when you get onto planets, uh, because the game wasn't made in that style, the like the the first person on land gameplay will just kind of be feel tacked on, kind of like uh, back in Oblivion when you went into third person mode how none of the animations really worked and it was all dumb looking and just kind of unplayable in third person. Uh, it tacked on like that. Like, I, I want it to be a really, really cool part and really fleshed out and just awesome part of the game. Oh, hello. Like, that's one of the reasons why uh, I liked what, when I first, like, jumped into... Is this a... Oh. A neutron star with a with another star up there. Um, when I first logged into Star Citizen, and I know that Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous seem to be like rivals, and I don't want you to think that I'm saying that Star Citizen is, is better than this game in any way. Uh, they both kind of have their merits at this point. Uh, but when I first logged into Star Citizen, I went to the social module and just walked around, and it was like. A city and it was really cool yeah it felt it felt kind of floaty and kind of weird and a little bit tacked on but it was cool and uh, it seemed like a totally like viable way to play the game all right what have, what have we got here so I'm just kind of worried oh here's one we'll go to that one I'm kind of worried that when they add the space legs that it's going to be like, man, this sucks. I'll just stay in my ship type of thing. And I don't want it to be that way. And I really hope that it doesn't or isn't. Is my course like right on the other side of the damn neutron star? Is that what's going on here? All right. We have a problem. I don't remember where the damn star was. It's right there. No, the neutron star is up there. Right? Yes? Okay. Cool. So let's go ahead and power up. Start that way. And I swear Great if I hit the uh, if I hit the star, it's gonna scare the hell out of me. It's gonna jump scare the shit out of me. I'm just saying that right now. I probably should wait to power up until I actually need to. I've been doing that a lot lately with the neutron stars. Man, you really have to respect these things because they are killers. <laughs> they can end your day really bad. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I guess that's just all I wanted to say about it, like, because the idea really intrigues me, and that's, it's something that I want. I want to be able to, as long as I'm not in Super Cruise, stop and get out of my ship at any time, like in Star Citizen. Like, I, I think that that is one of the biggest draws for that game, to just to be able to stop, pop your hatch open, get out of your ship, and EVA around a little bit. And I hope that that's the case. I hope that. It's, we're not only going to be able to get out of our ships after we land, but let's be honest, that's a very real possibility. In any case, we are one jump from this neutron star, so let's get going. I will have to fuel up at some point, but I think that we're doing okay on the fuel. Uh, and hopefully I can find something else to plot for after we're done, because this is the last one on the line. Um, I wish that there was a big star or something, or like one of those cool like neutron star or black hole nebula things, because I like to go from those. But it just it helps me to have a frame of reference for my path if I can jump from thing to thing rather than just choosing a a, a star system at random, which is basically what I'm doing tonight. Because there's nothing there's nothing out here 
really, I'm, I'm in like a barren patch. Also, it'd be really cool if some of these neutron star systems had stuff in them that were worth scanning. But I, I think I get, you know, why there isn't, I guess. Oh, hello. What are you, what are you guys? 27. Let's see what we've got here. I may or may not have just bumped the mic. If I did, I'm sorry about that. All right, well, we've got this guy. It's really far away, and it's probably just a high metal content. Uh, so let's move on. I've run into a couple more of these lately, too. They're just really, like, interesting-looking planets. But uh, remember, I took a screenshot next to one of these way earlier in the series. So it's not really a priority to get over there and check one of those out. Also, because these neutron stars are sought after by people... I feel like a nice guy leaving some things to be scanned. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's check where we are in relation to the core. And then let's find something to jump to. But see, these things down here, these are all black holes. They're just too far for me to go out of the way. There's another neutron star here. Yeah, let's jump to that guy. Shouldn't be too many jumps. Six or seven, something like that. Come on, map. I've already lost it, so please don't not co plot the core. Oh, there we go. Okay. This is the guy. I don't know why it's taking so damn long, but... Remember, uh, we finally got rid of all the crazy things there, and now I've, I've definitely lost it. So, I really need you to plot that course, Mr. Computer, sir. What was it, 122? So that's too far, so it was over here somewhere. It's gotta be, why is it not plotting the damn, there we go, there we go. Holy shit, man, it took forever. All right, let's see how many jumps. That is six jumps. Excellent. Let's get to it. Whoop. I don't know why I did that. Crankshift drive charging. All right, I'll see you guys uh, if I find something awesome. Well, we found another water world. That's cool. I thought that that would have been one too, but that is just a metal planet. And while I was jumping here, I kind of thought about how I wish that I had gotten close to that ammonia world that we found earlier in the video and I don't think that I've ever actually slide uh, like slid up against one and seen what it looks like and taken a screenshot so I hope that I find another ammonia world that, like relatively close possibly in this video would be great so that I could take a picture up against it but uh, I don't I just don't think that I've done that now, I know I found a lot of ammonia worlds but I think that I usually just scan them and go but I am going to slide up against this water world here and get a screenshot. Because it's been a while since I've taken a screenshot of just a planet. Oh, there's Commander Flame. Let's say hi to Commander Flame. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get a good screenshot for last, or for last night's video. Other than just the out in space looking at the galaxy type of thing which again really does not look any closer than it usually does <laughs> yeah yeah watching interstellar before going to sagittarius a um once again man the it, it despite the flaws that i think that, that movie had the visuals in that movie were excellent and the the massive black hole gargantua just looked so damn cool that i wish they had they had shown more of it and a little bit further away so you could see more of it but it was it was really 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 cool and i'm glad they didn't do the whole like because they did have a wormhole in the movie which was weird and kind of i'm not sure how i feel about how they they like handled the wormhole like visually 
but I guess I don't think wormholes are really real to begin with, so you can do anything with it. But uh, I'm glad that they didn't do what a lot of tropes do, where like the black hole itself was a wormhole and it got him home or something like that. Um, but all in all, it was a good movie. And uh, he's right. It was probably a cool thing to watch before, you know, before uh, before I got to Sagittarius. <laughs> he's he's re referencing yesterday's question. where I asked people to kind of explain relativity to me. And I looked up, I guess general re relativity is what they were referencing in the movie. Um, and I did look it up. And it seems like, I guess, the further away from, like, a gravitational body you get, the slower time goes. And they, they I guess, t quote unquote, proved it by, you know, putting... Uh, a clock at sea level and then a clock of like on top of like Mount Everest or something and the clock on Mount Everest goes slower I don't know if that necessarily and this is just look this it's a theory but smarter people than me have you know tested this and, and like did experiments and stuff like that so it's not like I'm saying that they're wrong and I'm right um but just because a clock moves slower doesn't mean that time is actually moving slower. Like maybe something is, is, um, now let's get in the screenshot mode here for a second. Right. But anyway, uh, just because a clock is moving slower doesn't necessarily mean that time is moving slower. Maybe just the internals of the clock are, are not working as fast because of the gravity. Oh, the planet is moving cause I'm still at super cruise. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, the hands on the clock may just move, be moving slower. It doesn't necessarily mean time is moving slower. But again, smarter people than me have have researched and experimented on this subject, and maybe I'm just not looking at it in the correct way, I guess. Uh, that being said, now, there's a lot of information on, like, stars and, and the lifespan of a star and and, you know, shit that goes on out in the galaxy, and and I'm really curious as to how people know these things. Like, how do you know what a star is made up of? You know? How does anybody know? Uh, and I would assume that maybe they're just guesses. Like, edu educated guesses from, again, people way smarter than me. Um, but let's take some of the stars that we found in this game and, and looked at the info on them. Like, it's made up of hydrogen and, and all that stuff. But how do they know? Like, it, it's not like anybody's ever sent anything into the sun. Well, maybe they have. I don't, I don't fucking know. But I've just always kind of wondered that. Like, I don't know. Uh, how do they know anything about a black hole at all? Like, the singularity and the event horizon. How do they know that that is what's going on? That the gravity... I, I don't know. Like, everybody knows the, the whole life... Or, like, everybody. But scientists know the whole lifespan of a star like how it is formed uh what happens after it forms how it dies but these things are supposed to take millions of years so how does anybody know how do they know like if you if you were to look however they find these things with the giant superpower telescope and they see many different stars in many different stages in their life how do we even know that those are the same thing you know what i mean Anyway, I'm probably starting to starting to sound dumb here. So this is probably where I am going to leave it, guys, because uh, I'm, I'm talking a lot and the throat it's getting. I, I don't know if you guys can even hear the change in my voice from when we start to now, but I can hear it. And it sounds like I just woke up or something. It's kind of my voice is getting scratchy and thin or whatever. But anyway, these are just some things to think about. And again, like I said three or four times already, people smarter than myself are the ones that have made these uh, conclusions and stuff. And they're probably right. I It just boggles my mind how they could even know. Like if you see a star that uh, is just forming 
and then you see a star like our star, like Sol, and then you see like a neutron star, how do we know that they're even the same thing? Like, how did they know that that neutron star was once a, a bigger star? You know what I mean? Anyway, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more videos of Elite, Dangerous, or any of the other videos that I've done, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you have anything to say, throw it down in the comments. Remember, I'm Commander Restless Corpse. Thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Eject. 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 Eject.